Welcome to Close Up with The Hollywood Reporter. I'm Matthew Bellany, the editorial director of The Hollywood Reporter. I'd like to welcome our guests here today, Rachel Weiss, Katherine Hahn, Glenn Close, Lady Gaga, Nicole Kidman, and Regina King. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Uh, you've read a lot in the news last year about everything going on in Hollywood with the upheaval, the Me Too movement. I'm curious how each of you has experienced change within the industry over the past year. I got a Laverne and Shirley credit on this movie, which I think was something that, and especially in someone in my position. Explain what that position, is. Yeah, what is that? That's when you are side by side with your co-star, mm. which is kind of hard to, to come by, and I think a rarity it usually would have been the dude and then, um, you know, the gal. the gal. So this was something that was a little bit easier to get. I think I could feel a was little bit of a shift. Was the dude happy about it? You know what, he was totally felt it. Like he was mm -hmm. like, there was no question that it was, it was for this movie, it was Paul Giamatti. So yeah. there was no, yeah. he was like, mm -hmm. of course, this is, the, the, this is exactly what should happen in this. So yeah, he's a good lucky in. He's a, such a gem. Mm -hmm. Well that's what's anyway. happening, you know, that's what's so exciting mm -hmm. is, you know, like with the Me Too movement and Time's Up and, you know, watching women raise their voices like that, I think what's exciting now is to see the men coming to stand by our side and yes. say, we want you to be loud. We want, mm -hmm. we want to hear your voices. I think, I think it's really remarkable. Is there something that you've experienced, some change this year that you've noticed? We got the film made. <laughs> <laughs> which film are you talking about? Um, Karen Kusama mm -hmm. um, directing Destroyer, mm -hmm. which probably would have been even harder. So mm -hmm. I see that as part of the movement in terms of change, and hopefully there'll be a lot more films with female directors mm -hmm. at the forefront. I've been part of two films that took 14 years to make. Start. Right. One was, the first one was Albert Knobs, mm. where I, I, you know, and yeah. then the second one was The Wife, yeah. that was written 14 going on 15 years. And Why did it take so long? Called the wife. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's a mm. it was a difficult subject for, and it's a real thing that mm. um, it was actually hard to find actors who wanted to be in a movie called The Wife. Mm. Wow, you know, I mean, I well, you got a great actors one. got a great one. Yeah, right? got, because you he had knows incredible he, chemistry. He, he knew what a great story it was, mm. and it's a uh, two women writers, the novelist and the. And the screenwriter, mm. and co-starring a woman, mm. woman editor, mm. oh, wow. a costume designer. So, to me, it, well, that was amazing, serendipitous timing. But it is a fact that it took 14 years to make. Mm. Yeah. Is there a time that you look back in your career where you wish you had spoken up, in a way that people are now? You know, I never had. Oh, I had one very subtle, me, you know, moment. It was an, at an audition. And, and the, the very, very famous, very big actor I was reading with put his hand on my thigh. And it had nothing to do with the character mm. or the scene. And it just froze me up. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And because you're, you're trying to do the scene and all of a sudden you think, why is he doing that? And, but now I realize, I think, if I had just said, oh, that feels good. You know mm. I mean? I, it, mm. it, who knows what, what they were trying to elicit. Right. Mm. Or if it was even, Conscious right. on his part, but I really understand the freeze uh, syndrome, you know. Mm. But um, it's just a trauma response. And, yeah, it is. I think uh, I've always tried to, even from the very beginning. Um, the second thing I did after Garp was about incest, something about Amelia, and it, and you know, I just. I've always tried to tell stories that had something important to say about women. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've never, and it's just about whether you have the chance to do it. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think, as Nicole said, hopefully we'll have more of a chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they're good stories. They should yeah. just be good stories. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's interesting because uh, I was talking to Maggie Gyllenhaal because we both have been acting for so long and were young when we started. Like I was very much aware of the pay differences between men and women and just said, yeah, okay, that's there, yeah. but I'm focusing on this and I'm focusing on the work. And so now that it's happening, I had that moment of reality like, oh, shoot, I never... Mm -hmm had a conversation with any of my yes. female peers that were experiencing the same thing. Or even your team, like even my, my agents, agents, my agents, even your, it was your yeah. 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 and it was yeah, just, it was just a given. And those conversations are happening now? 
yes, they are happening, mm -hmm. but um, there is this movement that we're all a part of. It's an all-inclusive sisterhood now that I think is pretty freaking fantastic. Yes. And now it's more it's of a naps. given, and it's only been over this past year. We have to make sure it doesn't that it, it doesn't go back. back. Yeah, I, I yeah. think it will become part of our culture. But don't you feel like that's what's happening? Yes, I feel yeah. like um, I no, no matter what age you are, no matter what color you are, and as you pointed yeah. out, that men are like, like Paul said, yeah, yeah. we yes. should be equal that, that in this for, space. For me, you know, when I started in the music business when I was around 19 years old, I mean, it was the rule, not the exception, that mm. you would walk into a recording studio and be harassed. I mean, mm. it was just mm. the way that it was. And so, you know, I do wish that I had spoken up sooner. I did speak up about it. Um, I was assaulted when I was young. And uh, I told people, and, you know, there was a boys club. Mm. And, you know, nobody wants to lose their power and so they don't protect you because if they say something, it takes some of their power away or leaves them, you know, sort of in the line of fire of being, you know, sued or shot down or not doing business with mm -hmm. someone else. And, uh, you know, what I hope is that these mm. conversations come together, that it's not just, you know, about equal pay on one side or equal billing mm. over here and then like assault on this side, but that it all comes together mm -hmm. and that, you know, this movement is all of those things. Mm -hmm. And I think the sharing of information is so important. I just know working with younger actresses, I say, ask me, ask mm. me anything mm. and I'll answer. Mm. Ask me anything financially, if you need advice, uh, just ask, ask the questions and the answers are here. I mean, I can only tell you what, what I advise, and you may take it or leave it, but it's nice to have access to information. But that's right? what's kind totally. of fantastic about mm. those young actresses mm. that are 16 and 17 now. They, they're they seeing what's going on. So they are empowered to, stop for, to start with, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of see it's like two separate things that have become connected so that there's all these women joining hands saying, mm. me too, and in, in numbers we get strength. And that's so moving and, and, and upsetting that such a thing is happening. But then there's another thing, which is what our jobs are, which is fiction, like telling stories. We're just storytellers. Like, I have a real problem with the idea of the, the strong woman characters. I always mm. think of like, well, does that mean we have muscles or something? Like, no one ever <laughs> says that to a man. I, I think it was like, women have central roles that are complex and drive the narrative. And then young girls growing up can see stories being told where a woman takes the central role, mm. where she's not peripheral to the story. She's driving the story. And so mm. you, you as a kid can go, oh, that's me. You know, you, I can identify. So it's, it's like a funny thing that they're coming together at the same time because women have been uh, speaking up about harassment. I don't yeah. know if it's a coincidence that suddenly mm. there are more, like you could get your film in, you could get your film in, and the favorite apparently took 20 years to make because there's lesbianism and three um, females at the center of it. I don't know. I, I can't tell what you happened. I think people first. would want to say that. <laughs> you, me too. Yeah. Like, like uh, delicious. The, delicious. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like delicious, <laughs> right? right? Totally. <laughs> Yeah, women getting it on. Yes. <laughs> what was wrong with 20 years ago that that wasn't okay? I don't know, I don't know what's changing the culture. Is it to do? I don't think it was sexual. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but is sexual harassment connected to how we're getting our stories told? Well, women's stories aren't like a niche. Mm. Well, it's like we're like so an endangered, it's like, right? Exactly. Endangered yeah, it doesn't species. feel like this other like yeah. thing that can be that it's just like a that it's just. We're half the planet. Humanity. Yeah. We're not like, part of culture. Yeah. Well, you're, in your film, in Private Life, it's a story of a couple going through the, the fertility process. Yes. And I don't feel, when watching that film, I don't feel like that is a woman's story. I feel like it is a story of a couple uh, Certainly, through this. Most, Yes, and it was very important to Tamara that it be about the couple going through that journey together. It's like a co-midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. And it's through kind of like the lens of fertility, but I wouldn't even say... Like, even when I was reading it, like, I couldn't picture the baby. Like, I couldn't even smell baby powder. Like, Paul at some point said, oh, my God, this is like waiting for Godot. It's like, they're on this, they're on this baby project journey. But really, it was more existential. It's so emotionally autobiographical, I think, to Tamara. Like, she wouldn't say it's autobiographical, but she would say it's emotionally autobiographical. And it took her a ton of time to get this made. Like Since I think Savages, to, 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 right? She yeah. made a film. Yeah. Since mm. Savages. And I know a lot of it was her own experience with having, becoming a mama. And, um, mm. 
but Karen as well, like Bradley too, like these hyper personal, like specific human, human, human stories that are so hyper personal, specific human, human, human stories that don't have to have like the, the that's what I'm excited about. I think the long term is to get stories yeah. that have a demographic that can then oh. be viable, you mm. know, to make more yes. stories. Right. Right. Thank you because for articulating that, that what I was trying is, to say. That is the bottom line. Yes. And it's up to us to tell to tell just great stories yes. that have fascinating characters. Yes. That move people. And help them get developed and help mm. them get made so that there is, you know, there is an audience for it. Yes. And that will lead to, to more uh, uh, possibilities. That's the empathy and machine. And then promoting yeah. it as well. I mean, that's... That's yeah. what we're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. You yeah. have to carry the thing on your back half the time, so. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and that's okay. The, part, part three. Yeah, <laughs> there's the so movie. much noise, so and there's so, so much to watch so now. So much content. So, so, but also, what is success, ultimately? Because there can be mm -hmm. massive financial success for certain movies, and there can still be um, smaller success for smaller movies. And it's still where it's made a certain amount of money. And it can be judged just in that regard, that warrants being talked about because yes. it doesn't just have to yes. be, oh my gosh, this mm -hmm. is, you know, suddenly broken all records. Right. It can be a small, little, tiny success. That's the right. wife is a huge success. Mm -hmm. my, my mom went and saw it and said, fantastic, you gotta go see this film in Australia. Oh, so, too. Yeah. Oh, really? In That's the cinema, so nice. yeah. I have a question for Gaga. Um, when you were filming and even before when you decided to sign on for A Star Is Born, how did you have reservations about how the performance would be compared to your own personal career arc? First of all, I wanted to be an actress before I wanted to be a singer, a musician. So this was a big dream of mine. I went to the Lee Strasberg Institute. I studied at Circle in the Square. I studied Stanislavski technique, Meisner, Adler. You know, I was really obsessed with method acting. Um, and so, you know, I felt really excited and really ready for this part. And when Bradley came to me with this story, the way that he wanted to tell the story and the way that he wanted to shoot the story was what was so interesting to me. In particular, um, his vision to shoot the story from behind uh, the stage so that when we were singing, you actually were looking from you know behind mm -hmm. and you could see the audience, that the audience really felt like they were on stage with us. And um, in terms of creating the character of Ali, you know, for me, I think for many years I have created characters for myself because I did not make it as an actress. Mm -hmm. So I made characters that I could be so that I could be one. And they were always in some mm -hmm. way um, related to the woman that I wanted to sing to, uh, a, a part of me. Uh, so, you know, like for my album, Joanne, you know, I, I always had this vision of a woman with like a baby in one hand and a Pinot Grigio in the other and <laughs> cut off jeans, oh. you know, and her hair, you know, wild and in a bun and just, just <laughs> sing, well, sing, singing her buns Saturday. off, you know, and, and going like, I never thought that I'd like Lady Gaga, but I, man, do I love this music. And, you know, and I, so I had a vision for that woman. Um, but for Allie, mm. this was totally different because it was a collaborative process and it was, um, you know, I, the team, and that he built, it was just so beautiful. The family, I mean, everyone from catering to the grips to, you know, the, our first AD, Shelley, who I love so much, and, um, you know, um, the lighting. Uh, every single aspect was just, it was, it was a sanctuary of trust. Mm. And so when I saw that trust with Bradley, then what I did was I, I said, okay, like, I'm going to have to become someone that I do not have complete control over. So, you know, I dyed my hair, uh, very early before we started filming. Um, I started to dress like her after I did some fittings with um, Aaron, who um, was our, our costume designer. I started to dress like her. Uh, and then I went into the studio and I was writing music uh, for the soundtrack and helping uh, to uh, hone in Ali's sound, which was essentially something that was going to arise out of Jackson's sound because she fell in love with him. And, and Mark Ronson said you wrote the songs as your character. Yes, yes, I did uh, with him. One, one song, a Shallow in particular. Um, but uh, I, I really wanted Ali to be nothing like me. Uh, this was very important to me because the truth is I am nothing like Ali. I created Gaga. And for me, 
I really believed in myself. I was banging down every door in New York trying to get a gig. You know, Ali has completely given up on herself. So she's a different person. So, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is was there reservation? No. There wasn't. I was really ready and I was really excited and I really, really wanted to take on the task. I was always like in between scenes, like performing, you know, with my library of emotions and of alchemy, you know, alcoholic relationships, um, uh, codependency, uh, what happens in the family dynamic when there's an alcoholic and, you know, addiction and trauma. How do these things all relate? And, you know, just kind of creating this sorcery when I wasn't on camera. Then I get to set, you throw it out the window and you be. Is there a part that, this is for the group, is there a part that you've always wanted to play that you know you can't? Virginia. Oh my God. <laughs> Juliet. It would be <laughs> me first. Um, <laughs> since we were talking about it, and, and I know we were saying sh strong women, we don't like the idea of the tropes of a strong woman, but you know, I guess like a Joan of Arc, type character, someone who in history that wasn't black, that I thought was mm. a pretty amazing mm. woman. There are several of them. So yeah, I'm mm. gonna go with Joan of Arc just in, <laughs> in honor of the fabulous Glenn Close. Mm. I mean, it's an interesting question because there's been some controversy in the past year over who should be playing which Characters. I mean, we right. saw Scarlett Johansson was going to play a transgender character, and then she dropped out of the role when there was some some backlash to that. What do you guys think about that? What do you think about who gets to play what character? That's a tricky question. I I, I think mm. first of all that what we are up to is a craft, and I think in your craft you should be able to, within a certain reasonable parameter, play anyone. I also think though that there are diverse actors and actresses that have not been served. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, so I think it's up to the industry to nurture those actors, nurture the trans actors, the you know, people who don't get a chance because they're not out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then the best person for the part should play. Oh, yeah. Now, mm. given, but, but then you have, but who's gonna, how can we raise the money? To you tell know, the what story. name will raise the money? You know, it's all so complicated. Yes. Complicated, mm -hmm. but I do think it's so exciting uh, to think of the diversity that's coming up and the huge, overwhelming mm. amount of talent that that's going to introduce into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just think people have to um, consciously look for people who who are mm. you know beginning you know who who, mm. who would be right for it and hope that they. And it's you know, stretching the training. and it's ch changing. You know? I mean, the yes. industry and the world is in enormous change right now, which is a fantastic thing for it all to be changing. But I do always, and maybe it's just the actor in me, the director has a vision. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's the director's choice. Film is the director's medium. That's It's their vision, ultimately. We come in and we serve the story, We serve, but we serve the director. It's that simple. So... They're going to cast who they think is right for their film, and it is their film. And so it's like a painter painting. They're going to paint what they want to paint. A director's right. going to make what he wants or she wants to make, and it's that. That's it. Yeah. But we do have to stretch everything so that there is opportunity for so many more people. But in, in, in the spirit of that, mm. wouldn't it be fantastic if I did play Joan of Arc? Yes. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't you want to interrupt anyone, but I was thinking that the whole time, like, you yeah. should do that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, I absolutely can happen. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I do think, like, there are some parts that have been played before, which I'm like, God, I wish... I immediately, when you said that, I thought of Gina Rollins and A Woman Under the Influence. Mm. Like, I think of some of these parts that are, like, just, like, these perfect things that have happened that, you know, like, those roles that you see. I mean, so many things I've seen you in, and I'm like, oh, God, they're so perfect. I can't believe I'm sitting across from you. This team. All of these humans but, that you just think, oh, well... God, I wish, you know, that you think of to be inside of that mm. and to feel that, but that's happened before. So I guess that's where the can't would come into it, you know what I mean, of a, of a character. Um, 
my answer would be, why not? Well, I mean, if it's already I been mean, played. Your whole career is that. Well, you did Sunset Boulevard, yeah, and oh you gosh. were like, <gasps> I've revisited. Oh, how did you I've do re- that? After I've revisited tw- right. two characters <laughs> twice. One God, God, I would have and loved it's to have incredible. Seen that. It's a huge luxury. Well, especially if a certain amount of time has gone by. Because it's different. You're in the just theater. a different person. Right. I so would love to. Whatever yes. Gina, the, the only thing that would be a, a burden is that you're up against Gina Rollins. But if you if it's a great character, it's yeah. a great character, and it and it's, the theater, it can it's be different. reinterpreted, validly. You know I, that is you know there's so many roles in the theater that it would be that I can't wait for my kids to be a little bit older to be able to get back to the theater. I don't know if you f- if you feel that too about the theater because it's hard. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, don't yeah. Know if you I did feel it that. in London recently, and it was yeah, it was hard. It's, it's a hard. Lot of you, I'm well, sure. you miss bedtime. Yeah, you, you miss do. Your bedtime. You miss bedtime. You, when you think about it in terms of just oh, well, three months. Of, no, it's hard. And then you is start missing to, part. Yes. It's and your day too switches much. at like two in the afternoon. Yeah. You start to be like, like your head starts I to go to the theater. I can't miss bedtime. That yeah. makes me cry. I, I don't want to do that. that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. But if you think of A Star is Born, that's a, a role that has been reinterpreted. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Nice. It's, it's been so remade three gone. times. And then there's the original version with uh, oh, Janet right. Gaynor. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that story has been retold. Um, but it was important to me not to pull upon those characters, mm, yeah. but to understand the trajectory of the legacy, mm. understand what you know, A Star mm. is Born is meant to mean, and then really create something modern and new uh, that would connect with people now. Oh. Uh, That's a great story. It's, it, it's, it, a, it's, it's a, an important story, yeah. and, and, and I think, I really believe, you know, I say this a lot, but I don't think she becomes a star in the film. Sorry, spoiler alert, but it's called the star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, no. she, she becomes a star oh, in the it. film. But the oh, truth I... is that I really, you know, and this this goes back to what you were saying about um, strong women mm-hmm. in roles. Um, and I don't know that you would necessarily um, view Ali as a strong woman uh, in this film. You know, she's quite vulnerable. And, yeah. uh, she's she's very insecure, complex, resilient, yeah. though. But, and yet. I do not believe a star is born in this film until the last frame of the movie when she looks into that camera. Yeah, the strength. The star is born because the star is bravery. The star is perseverance. Mm. The star is the ability to continue to go on in the face of trauma and persevere. And, you know, I, what I was thinking when you were saying about strong women is that Actually, it's not, yeah, it isn't about muscles. Mm. It's our, about our ability to endure. Yeah. And we have been as a gender, gender. Yeah. through a lot for yeah. many years. And it's like, you know, it's, it's sort of like I just see like corsets just flying off <laughs> all over the place and women <laughs> shouting and saying, yes, we're free. And, mm. and I'll wear it if I want to and I, I won't if I don't want to. Um, but I, I think that there is a sense that actually there is a strength in vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that uh, what I really mm. admire about what you all do, and because you know this is new for me, is that the amount of places that you have to go to uh, from, a, from a deep perspective to the, to the nectar of your hearts and to go deep, deep down every time to play a role and to bring that deep, deep place every day to set, I mean, that is incredible. I mean, when I'm on stage performing with doing music, you know, I have the audience and it's like this adrenaline rush and I'm talking mm. to people and shouting at them. And, you know, w- with the Joanne tour, there was a bit of trauma because it was about my uh, father's sister who died. But, you know, you guys really like you're doing eight shows a week playing Joan of Arc's mother. I mean, th- there's no way that you're not going to the depths of who you are into a very scary place in order to do that. And I just, I just, have, to, I just have to commend each and every one of you for it because mm. I, I still feel like I'm recovering from playing this role. And how unusual is it in a story, in, in fiction, to see uh, a woman work through her vulnerability and her resilience and then to be born, as you say, in that final mo- moment, and a man to sacrifice himself mm. for that? Purpose. It's quite unusual in the story, don't, don't you think? I, I think the way that Bradley chose to tell the end of this film was extremely of the times. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, Glenn has a, an incredible uh, charity, um, Bring Change to Mind, and I have mm. the Born This Way Foundation, mm-hmm. and they're both focused around mental health. Mm-hmm. And you know, this was, you know, sort of at the gravity um, of 
I believe, uh, at the gravity of one of the themes in this film. And yes, it, it was a, it was an uh, unorthodox way, but it was the truth way. Yeah, it was the authentic way, mm -hmm. and uh, and it changed as we were filming. I mean. Hmm. The the script was being rewritten hmm. and songs that I mean, we had a trove of songs that even on the day Bradley would be like no we're gonna do this song not this song go switch it out and then I'd be in my trailer at the piano <laughs> getting ready trying mm. to you know, prepare but you know yeah absolutely yeah I I I one hundred percent see that and I agree with you hmm. <laughs> Rachel is there a, a piece of advice that you were given early in your career that stayed with you either good or bad. No. No. <laughs> I can't think of anything. I'll be there. Anyone else? Advice? I want to give you one. I, somebody <laughs> told me my first job, try not to ever compare your career to anyone else's. Mm -hmm. That was good. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Listen? That's a hard one. I've, I've never forgotten it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a an highly competitive mm -hmm. field that we're in. And there's, you know, you can, you can get, if you let yourself, you know, sure, I wish I could have played that, you know. But if you eat yourself up like that, you you destroy something yeah. that's very important. So I think it's a profound, it was a profound piece of advice because it's meant to me that I'm very subjective about what I choose and um, and I own it. I own mm. my choices. You do. You know, good and bad, It's it's awesome. we're the result of, of, of all our choices. And we don't know, you know, it's, we don't have any template, mm. it's just mm -hmm. what feels right. Mm -hmm. and, and what felt right about the wife? First of all, I thought it was fascinating, uh, just I'd never been asked to play a character like that. But also, I had a lot of questions, and I knew that I had to answer those questions in order to play her, and the big one was, why didn't she leave him? Because I thought initially that all the women would jump up and say, oh, just leave him. But mm. it was so much more complex mm. than that, yes. and I had to figure that out in order to play her without any kind of judgment at all. And, and it was that journey, but I went into not knowing if I'd be able to figure it out. I had a so lot of questions. So much of the film is you saying one thing, but your face says another. So mm. much. Mm. And millions of women are living that, mm -hmm. yeah. unfortunately. Regina, what, uh, what made you say yes to Beale Street? Oh, my, James Baldwin, Barry Jenkins. I mean, <sighs> he is one of the most gracious human beings I've ever met. He is truly a collaborator, and I know I'm going to learn something. I'm going to leave um, the situation bigger than I was when I came in. Um, and then just Baldwin's words. And, yeah, mean, what about the character specifically that you play? Uh, Sharon Rivers was just in the book and in the script. She represented so, my grandmother, my mother, and she created this for me, this home, her and her husband, Joe, that there was no shame within the walls of their home. There, the shame was not allowed. And I just thought that was beautiful and powerful. And I wanted to be the woman that lives her life like that. She created this safe space for her girls to thrive and use their voices in 1974 when you know women weren't as vocal then as they are now. Um, and here you have this woman that operates from a place of love, not a place of fear. We have, there's a scene in the film between myself and Anjanou, well, it's two families together. And Anjanou, Ellis, and my character, we're both very, very confident women. But when you really like take it all apart, mm -hmm. Her character is operating from a place of fear. Her strength is coming from a place of fear. It seems strong, but she's scared. And she has dictated things so that she didn't have to or doesn't have to um, address that fear, that little girl that's scared, where uh, Sharon um, mm. is the opposite. And just seeing that together, uh, I thought that that was um, fantastic to see black women layered different mm -hmm. in one space and really be seen. Um, because the, the, the pain that Anjanou's character has, she still um, loves her child, but don't, don't know how to show love. And here's Sharon, the opposite, who is all about love. 
and showing it, just outward with it. Right. You know, they're, the Rivers family is that family that everyone's like, I want to be a part of their family. <laughs> Nicole, um, speaking of love for a child, in Boy Erased, you play the mother of a, of a child who's sent to a gay conversion therapy. Mm. Mm. What about the messaging of that movie appealed to you? I immediately connected to Martha in the mm -hmm. film she's called Nancy, but actually both the roles that I play, I did sort of very close together. And even though they're diametrically opposed in terms of the way they look and behave and as, as women, they're still the on a similar so, yeah. path because they're both looking to heal what they've done to their child, mm -hmm. which I find like that, mm -hmm. that just gets yeah. me. Martha, because she's a real person, mm -hmm. she put her child into conversion therapy because she thought that it was the right thing to do. She actually thought it was the most loving thing to do because she didn't know anything else. And she loves her son. They actually now have the most extraordinary relationship mm -hmm. and she's apologized and healed what she did, which I think is beautiful. That mm. That's a great message in terms of what can happen. I mean, their, their story is real. And it's mm. they have the most intimate relationship as a mother and son that I've seen in terms of a family that have gone through so much, but they're like this. So the idea that you can do something and then heal it mm. is very powerful mm. to me. That's what I responded to emotionally. What about this but question? Can I just going, say yeah, one piece ahead. of advice? Because yes. as actors, I think it's, I was taught really early on never to cut a take. Mm. Uh -huh. Do you ever cut a take? No, I mean, unless like you're like in yeah, danger. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, to cut a take. Never uh, cut a take. Mm -hmm. Right? Why? Yeah. Because you never know what's going to happen. Gonna because happen. Yeah. if to you're trying to control it or control the, right. the take, the magic happens advice. a lot of yeah. times without. So I was taught that. At like, I started working at 14. Mm -hmm. It's really good And advice. it's ingrained mm -hmm. in yeah. me. And I always try to pass it on to other actors because mm -hmm. it's... I'm over. I, yeah, right? It took but me so know. long starting in the theatre. It took me so long to realise you didn't have to be perfect on the whole take. No. <laughs> right. It may take a little bit. Yeah. Not, mm -hmm. And it's, it's so hard to let, you know, it, surrender. Only the director so, gets to cut the yeah, yeah, right yeah, advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless your life is in danger <laughs> and, or you're seeing you know, you're about to. <laughs> but, yes. but it's kind of great because it takes all of that. So mm -hmm. then it can go off into God knows mm -hmm. where, but yeah. mm -hmm. something fantastic may come out of it. Mm -hmm. anyway, I was actually sorry, told me first. I took, took it off no, politics that's, that's and back really to the work. Advice. <laughs> We can remember <laughs> 10 minutes ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the first, <clears throat> I had a small part in a film, the director said to me, don't touch your hair. Because right. I've obviously gone oh. like that or something. And yeah. said, I don't know, that's less okay. profound always advice than yours. It's good advice. <laughs> oh, always touch my hair. Do you always touch your hair? Oh my God, oh, wow. so often. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you got great hair. I'm always like, I want to hey. touch your hair. If I had hair like that, I'd be flinging it around and touching. My sweet agent would be like, run a brush through your hair. Yeah. Like, as I would yeah. be on my... Yeah. You know, you... Go ahead. The advice I was given, not related specifically to acting, right. is Tony Bennett who was very close friends with Duke Ellington. Mm. And he used to um, like sneak him in the back of hotels during segregation mm. so that they could play together. And um, Duke Ellington said to him, rule number one is never give up. And yeah. rule number two is always listen to rule number one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, kind of the same it. thing. I got some, a wonderful direction never, once that I've, mm, I've again, never mm. forgotten was if you're lost, just drown in each other's eyes. Mm. Uh, awesome. I like oh, that. Yeah. I'm gonna take that. Yep. It, and it's so it's so wonderful because the most powerful thing we have as human beings there are two eyes mm. looking into two other eyes. Mm. Right. If you just listen to yeah. like that's yeah. most of it is just, I yeah. always forget yeah. too. It's like mm -hmm. listening. I have th I, not that I run around with Alan Watts quotes, you guys, because I don't, but this was a piece of advice that I try, because my career has been a tad chaotic in terms of just the projects that have been, oh, it's been a little bit all over the map, but I certainly spent a lot of time in my 20s not really being satisfied by the work that I was getting. Anyway, I, I'm swinging this around to this Alan Watts quote that I just recently came upon that I was like, oh, God that was you're under no obligation to be the person that you were five minutes ago, which I think is such a great way to be as a human, just stuff like that. We just, you don't have to like freeze in anything. I just also saw the mm. Quincy documentary, which, and that oh, brain is fantastic. like, oh, mm -hmm. so beautiful mm -hmm. just to see mm -hmm. that elastic brain. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, you've just made me think of some advice. Okay. Oh, great. Oh, great. 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 Okay. I was feeling so shallow here. It's like touch your hair. It's like, she's <laughs> really superficial, this lady. Um, oh, yeah. So you don't have to be the person you were five minutes ago. That, that, that when you play a character, this was advice given to me, that if someone says to, to you, well, your character wouldn't do that, it's just like, that's just not true. Whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it is that yes. happens in, in the take, even when it goes wrong and you want to say cut and you don't, yeah. that's what's, that is your character. There isn't a character that you have to reach for. It's just whatever happens, that's the character. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think when I started out, I was thinking, well, my character would do this, but not this. And, this, and that's just, that leads you down a, a, a very fruitless a, path. A frozen... Thank you for helping me remember oh, you're some so advice welcome. that I've taken. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Favorite. Your character is very devious and has, you know, <laughs> has a lot of nuance to it. I'm wondering what you brought to that that wasn't on the page. I think everything was on the page. Um, the writing was just so rich and complicated. Mm. And for all characters, not just my character, the th all three uh, female roles. Um, but yeah, on the page, I saw in the foreground strength and power and bossiness and sadism and aggressiveness. Mm. And, then, and then all around that, I saw vulnerability and neediness, a need for love, a reliance on mm. a best friend and a lover. She's, she, just everything was on the page, really, for me. And then it just sparks with your imagination. Um, and when you say the lines, the lines plus your imagination take you somewhere. So I don't ever think of it as a, it's not like a conscious choice made in advance of the moment between action and cup. I'm sitting here listening to you talk going like, I did the opposite of that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because with Ali, you know, like I do certain things when I sing and I'm on stage. Like, you know, I, 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 I have like a certain way about me when I perform. And uh, sorry, I just touched my hair. <laughs> I've been touching <laughs> you all the time. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but I was uh, really conscious and actually asked Bradley to and he, he would have directed me on it anyway, but I, I wanted to be pointed out when I was doing something that would look decidedly like me, the mm. way that my fans see me, uh, because I wanted her to be so different. Wow. So I, I focused a lot on my, the way that I sang and the way that I moved my jaw. I also focused a lot on um, the way that I held the microphone and the way that I communicated with the audience um, because I just wanted it to be so different. And because I have fans that, that notice certain things about me that are so me when I'm performing, that I it kind of had to erase those things. Mm. Right. And you know, the things that are inside my private life that they don't know about me, those were the things that I was really using. And mm -hmm. that that's what I was pulling on, is I was like, you know, all the stuff that I don't let you see, all the reasons that I've put this armor on for so many years, all the things I've been running from, I'm gonna use that. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna erase as much as possible of everything else. That's very really brave. Do you feel mm -hmm. like you have a very strong performing persona? Like, do you feel like your armor when you're on stage is bulletproof? For me, like, when my friends started to call me Gaga and I was performing on the Lower East Side, it was like a superhero. Yeah, costume. costume. Like I just, I felt like I could do anything. Mm. And what's changed about it though over the years for me is that, you know, I grew up in a culture of people that were constantly transforming. Like we were all like really into glam culture and like David Bowie. And mm -hmm. so like we would all change our looks, all change our art. We were always, you know, shifting at the same time. And then when I moved out to Hollywood, I was not in the midst of that. I was in the midst of me changing all the time and nobody really changing uh, very yes, much around me. And it was uh, very difficult. I just was really conscious of that when I played this character. It was, like, it was really important to me that I gave something that I don't always give yeah. as a musician. Mm. Hmm. Nicole, you've spent some time via your husband on the country mm. music circuit. What's a detail that they get right in Star is Born? Oh, so much. I mean, I think Bradley studied the whole oh, yeah, he did. world and, and certainly recorded down there and did a lot mm -hmm. of, so. He wrote his own music yeah. as well. Yeah. He was in the studio all the time. Was he playing the guitar himself? My husband or? No, Bradley? no, no. Bradley. Bradley. My husband plays the guitar. No, no, no Bradley. <laughs> what did you do on Destroyer to research that role? 
opportunity? I actually to? just kind of entered through. I mean, I entered so deeply into her that I didn't, I, I don't always do this with a character, but this one I had to, because I didn't want to feel like I was ever shifting into a performance. So I just stayed in character the whole time. Mm. Um, which was really exhausting. Tough. Yeah. <laughs> it was difficult because, you know, you don't get to explain why you're behaving in a particular way, or I didn't, so I just kind of stayed in it. But I had to really learn how to use guns because I had no idea how to yeah. fire guns or really use guns. So I put a lot of time. I live in Tennessee. I have a gun range that's just down from my house, and I would go down there and I can, I can shoot anything mm. that, I, that is in that film. How do you and I can decipher, reload and I can... Like, when you say that, you know, like, mm. like living the role, mm. you know, because, like, I, I feel like that happened, but, mm. like, how do you decipher, like, what's happening in your personal life? How does mm. it inform each did other? You did you stay the character when you went home? I didn't... You didn't have to call me Erin, but I would go... It just orbits around. It kind of enters the psyche, and I just was... Yeah, my husband was like, I cannot wait for this thing to end. Mm. This yeah, is, I, you were just I, in a bubble. I felt that a right? lot. Yeah. I thought that a lot. That's when my daughter pain. came up to me and said, I want so, you, I want all of you. Yeah. Mm. When she was three. Oh, I, was, I want oh. you, I want but all I mean, of you. But I mean, you have children of artists, children you know, of they, actors. They feel your, your distraction if you're working. They feel you know. the change in your psyche. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cell phones can That's contribute to that as well, I think. They do, yeah. they do feel yes. it. And they require, you know, we all have <laughs> our path. Sorry. You know, my children have musician father and an actress mother. That balance, I find yeah. the hardest thing. Really hard. I find it so That's hard. I was wondering. It's impossible. It's really it's difficult. It's impossible. And <laughs> mm -hmm. hopefully you build the intimacy with your child so that there's an enormous... I mean, you have a fantastic relationship with your daughter. Yeah. There's a... Yeah. You know, you've been through so much together yeah. and they have an understanding of the artistic path, whether they go down it, but mm. it's kind of I think the hardest thing for, for a child yeah, it, living through my... You know, seeing mm. my daughter is that... They sense when people want their parents, whether it's the kind of the lust of the of, mm. of celebrity, and I think that can be very frightening to a child, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like she's my mother, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and when Annie was really little, and we'd go mm. in an airport or something, mm. and she'd see somebody with that face coming court towards yeah. you, and she'd just go, yeah. like, yeah. stay away. Yeah, she's mine. Yeah. I, and so I, I think they get torn between. I have a that, son, that. And, and he's protective yeah. like that, but yeah. he's more, like, vocal about it, mm. you know? He's like, hey. <laughs> oh, yeah, my kids will say, you know, I hate yeah, that yeah. film. No, no, he, no he's like, right. hate no, that he will character. Don't blame my when people are in our space, <laughs> yes, he right. will help them leave our space. Or, <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. No, or, yes. or, or when he sees it coming and I may be doing something and not paying attention, he'll go, Go to the left, go to the left, go yes. to the left, yeah, go yeah, to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah, fine. Yeah, he's yeah. Very, very, but it's like because it's been his life for us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have your children keep you in check, it sounds. Oh, it's incredible. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the best feedback different... you've gotten from a kid, either yours or another? Um, well, what, I don't know. I mean, I, I did a thing, Aquaman, and I did it for them, actually, because, mm. you know, you, you do something like Destroyer, mm -hmm. they're like, we're right. never going to be seeing this. Right. Um, <laughs> But you do Aquaman and it's like, oh my God. So cool. Yes. Yeah. And How old uh, are they the now? best feedback I got was I ate a gelatin goldfish <laughs> in the in the scene. Fabulous. And they thought they think that's my best work. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was playing my husband. Oh, oh, the right. show that I'm working on now. Right. I love yeah. it. But yeah. do you, so but I got brownie points that, for that. Is there a way that you draw the seven that? and ten? I'm interested. Like when you go home, like after I do. You do I drop just it. can't no, I can't do I don't know how to uh, keep it, the character going. I just working. can't do it. I, yeah. For me, it's me actually too. even shorter that. It's like between action and cut. Yeah. I dive in yeah. and then I hear cut. I never say it myself. Yeah. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> no, I totally, I have done that, but it's, you're so right. It's so important not to. And when I hear cut, it's, it's gone. There was an I have that like too sometimes. It's just, just for it, that film. It changes every, yes. yeah. yeah. But just yeah. to make you feel, it made it at least, I, I felt so much less precious since having kids, like it felt less self. Involved. It puts it all in, yeah, it just puts it in such a perspective. It's like, before it used to have to be like the whole day would be about Leading, like gearing yeah. up or like getting in. And now it just, it felt like you, now it's a faster, deeper dive if that makes 
sense, mm. I think, to get. You just, because yeah. it's just, you have to. Yeah. 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 Like, you just don't have the time to, like. Do you wear a watch on your right hand? <laughs> I have no watch. I have a watch. Meanwhile, I do this all the time. Don't think I've ever worn a watch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just, like, fake props. My son used to, when I, when I did a play, the last two plays, I don't know if I'm, he's in the other room and I'm learning lines, and I'm saying them out loud, he'll just shout from the other room, true. Wow. False. <gasps> False. Because wow. he knows better than, than wow. I guess, anyone. Wow. When mom's being a big Oh my old God, that's faking. amazing. <laughs> I know, yeah. My kids have never seen, they've been able to see like maybe one thing I've done. No, this is rehearsing back home. This no, is not that's, in the no, theater. That's in <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Do you get to do it back to him? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Well, he's, true. True. he's always false. Oh my yeah. God, that's incredible. That's and that's great. no joke. No. Am I the yeah. only one here with no children? Yeah, not yet. I am. I am the only one. Uh, but, so but it's dumb. a great thing to be able to tell women because I think it is a really hard thing. Is you can definitely have a child and have your career. Oh, you absolutely. can what do I, it. Yeah, what I you're going to give up things. There's going to be compromise. There's, it's going to, but. But gosh, you can jump in and do it, mm -hmm. and it, and it's fine. Because so many young actresses say to me, "How do you?" You know, I'm like, "If you want your baby, have your baby. Have it. If you don't want is... it, don't have it. Yes, but you can if you want to. It and sounds you special will. too, though. Mm -hmm. That there's like some sort of that having children in your lives. That when you have that psychological change mm. as you are, you know, taking on a role, that they sort of snap you out of it a bit in a way. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Other and they can do that too. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. But I think all uh, women in careers that require, mm. the high powered careers, whether it's an attorney, a doctor, an actor, a triple, quadruple threat, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the way it works for you is different than how it works mm. for Glenn. It's different than how it worked for Catherine, yeah. and, and so because I really, you, you I make really it, struggle yeah, with the, work, with the draw. You make it work, and it's, you know what? You know like what I think drop. is important. Yeah. And, and when I thought a lot about it um, in the context of the wife and my mom, mm -hmm. uh, because my mom was a very interesting, very smart. She she actually she never graduated from high school. She fell in love with my dad when she was eighteen, and she at the end of her life said to me, I feel like I've accomplished nothing. Oh. Mm. And Which what I think, well, I think about that a lot because I think we have our children and all that and the nurturing, natural thing that we do as women. Mm. And then we have the need for personal fulfillment. Mm. We need to feed our souls right. and our hearts. And I think mm. that's what our work does. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you can do both. Mm. And, I, and I think both of them are tremendously, or not. Mm -hmm. But I think to feed your, you your soul, mm -hmm. uh, and this is why I think we're so blessed to do what we do, because basically God, we tell stories, mm -hmm. and as we're telling these stories, we're feeding mm -hmm. and refueling ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you have to do that for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's actually made you me want to have do kids. It, for <laughs> it makes um, sense lovely. Yeah. What, who is a character that you played that you would like to have dinner with? The Marquise de Mertoy. <laughs> oh, God, I completely forgot about oh, that movie. Her with her <laughs> she scared me. Oh, you were so extraordinary, though. Uh, Cruella would be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, she was She's scary. Yeah. She has secrets, too. <laughs> oh, Virginia Woolf. Nice to Wolf. know you. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll bring her to dinner. Okay. Yes. Wolf. Yeah. I've got to do that. I would, good sir, one. I should just talk about the favorite, but I would go back to 1708 England and have some tea with uh, Queen Anne and oh, Lady You know what those outfits? Did you experience would the I same thing? Like no, them? yeah, the, uh, the Emma Stone said her organs shifted. Like, oh, people are so fascinated in her organs. <laughs> Let's talk about her liver. All right, I couldn't believe it though. Was <laughs> so it really funny. that bad? It's so funny. So you everyone's talking to me about Emma's yeah. organ yeah. wearing oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, shifting around. They're really uncomfortable. Yeah. But you mentioned earlier about women being liberated and throwing mm. away their corsets, and it's it, it's interesting. Even though I've worn them on like almost every red carpet. And I know that. You look great, you look beautiful in there. But in this film, they are all wearing corsets, but they're incredibly, um, they're women who hold very powerful positions. Um, mm. I'm trying to avoid saying strong women <laughs> because they're Don't vulnerable. avoid saying it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think your, they, your statement still But they're in true. very tight corsets. They were yeah. made also back then with whalebone. Mm. Which is really yes. like spice with whalebone. Oh. It's really well, uncomfortable. A lot of them didn't get dressed until after tea time, right? I mean, where you, you, you'd be in your boudoir with your... You put your corset on in the second half of the day, right? You don't you spend need to let it 12 well, so hours in one of those corsets. Only the aristocrats would have been in them. I don't think the, yeah. the rest of the country no. was wearing um, corsets. It's just for the very rich folks. 
Uh, oh, Regina. I just think about a character yeah. that I would have dinner yeah. with. Margie Hendricks. She was yeah. a uh, singer in uh, Ray. She, oh, uh, yeah. 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 Ah. Tell, yeah. us about, tell us about her. She, um, they had a child together. They was She was one of his many lovers. They had a, a very passionate relationship. And she died of an overdose, but it was not an uh, overdose. She just got bad drugs. Mm -hmm. And um, I just would ask her so many questions. Again, why, why'd, you, why'd you stay? And, and when you did say, F it, I'm out, right. what was that? Was it the straw that broke the camel's back moment? Was it something you were, you were always on your way to do? Mm. Um, I would ask her so many, and her voice, oh my God. I would ask her who inspired her as an artist. Mm. So mm. it would be Margie Hendricks. I'm so glad I had a little bit of time to think about ah, that. Yeah. I was gonna say, girl, you've been working too long to not have somebody. Exactly. <laughs> right. No, and maybe I would say the rabbi. In, I played a rabbi in Transparent. Mm. I, think, I think I would could use a, a rabbi these days to <laughs> sit down and have tea with. Nice. Just because rabbi. I've only been in like, one movie doesn't mean I wouldn't want yes. to meet Ali. Okay? Yes. 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 I was in, I was in, I was in, I was in Machete I Kills. I would love to. I was going to say, it's either Ali or American Horror Story character. Well, I, I was in Machete Kills for a cameo. Okay. I, I worked with Robert, Robert Rodriguez, Rodriguez yeah. twice. Um, and uh, since they too, I played a waitress. And I, I would not want to sit down with the Countess at all mm -hmm. because... I mean, who I became during that time is like just a horrible human being. Like I just, no. I mean, I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, she really, was a cold piece of work. really, yeah. and truly, she is a horrible human, a horrible vampire. And I like. I'll bring her along. No, 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 no. But I, I swear to you that the human being that I became during that time, like I like just want to apologize to everyone in my life <laughs> for like because she was just the most shameless character. I mean, the woman, the woman would feed after having sex and killing people, and then uh, she would, <laughs> then the way she would keep herself young is mm -hmm. by funneling the blood through children yeah. that she would kidnap. I mean, oh, no, she's not like, so, so, No, we don't want her. So, so, so I have no interest in saying that with the cat this, but I would, I would, I would love to be sit off. down with Allie. I really would. Yeah. I would really love because, like, mm. in this, like, and I know it's so fresh, but like, mm. I just, I just wish I could give her like this really big hug. Mm. <laughs> you're so vulnerable talking about her. That's mm. the sweetest. No, I, I, just, I really yeah. do because, like, you know, like, you know, alcoholic relationships, like, and what that does to a woman, mm. you know, and or a man in, the, in that position, it's just so extremely powerful, and. The mixture of that with success, I think, it pushes it over the edge. But you know, I, I just thought it was important to you know point out with the film is that the film is really not just about stardom in the fame sense. Mm. It's it's about stardom in terms of bravery. And I really wish I could just sit down with her and like hug her and be like, it's it's okay because what what happens is is you you fall in love with the broken child in someone else. Mm. Uh, you want, the, the, the person that has the addiction, you want to fix them. You, you want to love them no matter what and no matter how shameless they are. Uh, it's your job. It becomes part of you. So I would, I'd really love to sit down with her and just hug, I would really love to give her a hug. Mm. All right, well on that note, our time is up. No, oh, no, no, wait a minute. No, no, no. I have to see all your goddamn movies. <laughs> I know. I'm looking I know. around at you like, I haven't seen it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. So yeah. just know that's why it's like blank stares They're when you're talking about your character. <laughs> I'm dying to see I these didn't movies. I didn't mean to that's, see everything. That's, that's, that's quite all right. And we coming soon, funny. Regina as, as Joan of Arc. That's going to be Yes. yes. Right. Someone will watch this and, yeah. get, and do it. Yeah. So it's I'm thrilled to see all of your work. All right, we want to thank our guests, Rachel Weiss, Catherine Hahn. Glenn Close, Lady Gaga, Nicole Kidman, and Regina King. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This one was good. Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Kidman. This is Lady Gaga. I'm Katherine Hahn. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching the Hollywood Reporter Roundtables on YouTube.